In the waters of the Jordan River, Jesus was anointed as your priest and your king. The water that flowed down his head flowed to you. As the blessing of God is upon him, so it is upon all those that are in him and with him. As the heavens were open for Jesus, through him they stand open for you. As the Spirit alighted on Jesus, so that Spirit remains on those who are united to him. As you dwell under the shadow of his wings in this Christian church, so you live and dwell in Christ's earthly body as his own. The water of the Jordan rolled over him and onto you. Though sin and choices have separated you from God, you who were far away were brought near in the flesh of Christ. Doubt it not, Jesus' baptism and your baptism are not separate things, but one thing, you are baptized into his life. Apart from that baptism, and without baptism, you are not with Christ, but in and through baptism you too are in the Jordan. You are with Christ as you walk from the Jordan waters to live as God's beloved Son. The union that we have to Christ is seen in a favorite psalm of mine, a very curious psalm, Psalm 133. Behold, the psalmist says, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. Think about that oil running down Aaron's beard. He was God's chosen priest. The oil dripped all the way down to the outer edges of his clothing. So were all the people on the outskirts of the kingdom, brought together in oneness with the priest that God had chosen. And what God gave that man to do for them kill beasts, pour blood, offer meat, burn incense, make atonement, say prayers, God's people who stood under that priest were blessed. From the head of the kingdom in the highest priest in Aaron, from its depths in an ordinary citizen, God's blessing was upon his people as they were drawn together. As the oil of God's pleasure and choice poured on Aaron, so it brought them up into one body and holy community. Though many were far away, they were brought into one. And though many were sinful and separated, their new identity was as brothers. The anointing oil that poured down on God's chosen priests also poured down on God's chosen kings. David was caring for the sheep when Samuel took out his special horn that held the contents of the oil used for anointing. In that moment, he went from sheep herder to king elect. I think about that oil that ran down his face so ruddy and handsome, down onto his shepherd's crook and staff, hands full of oil as he grasped the slingshot in his hand. What wonderful things David would do. He united the people of God, fought their battles, slaughtered their enemies, and taught them the worship of God. That anointing oil poured down onto David's head, yes, but also flowed to the people of God as they were recipients of the blessing of his kingship. Living with David and under David and in David, they lived in peace under God's blessing. Their life was tied up in his. And so Jesus stood in John's waters. Jesus was anointed, too, with water in the Spirit through the hand of John by God's choice. Jesus, dripping wet, stood there in those waters as his Father spoke down his blessing on his beloved Son, this is my Son, whom I love, with whom I'm well pleased. The word Christ has become so attached to Jesus that we think of it as his last name. But you know what it means. Christ means anointed one. 
Where did Jesus become the Messiah, the anointed one, the one anointed by God the Father to be the one whom he promised to said to be the elect one for the sake of his people, but in the waters that are poured over his head as we heard today? Those figures of the Old Testament that were anointed have him as their goal. They are anointed, but he alone is the anointed one. He is not a Christ like they are, but the Christ. As the one baptismal hymn puts it, Jesus is God's choice from Adam's fall to save the world and free us all. As the water dripped down, Jesus is presented for us to take and live under even as his work for us begins. Let's do this, John. Let's get going to fulfill all righteousness. Christ's baptism brought into him as forgiven the chosen people of God, bringing us all righteousness, his righteousness, and victory over death. And you were baptized too. The water from the Jordan rolled down. It rolled down from drops of sweat like blood shed by him in the Garden of Gethsemane. It cascaded down from the tears that flowed from his heart, even as his side burst forth with blood and water from the tip of the soldier's spear, rolling down into your eyes and moistening the collar of your baptismal gown, clothing you with his life. Before those waters were on you, they were on Christ, for you stand in the shower under him and in him. There is really no difference between his death and yours, your life and his, his birth and yours, for you are in him. You are baptized, christened, Christed, Christ's body and blood being placed on you, in you, and around you. Nothing else but that body and life matters. Rested from a world with no identity, aimless and courseless in this defunct world. You are part of the glorious salvation plan of God's people in the body of this man. Brought into life un under Jesus, baptism is the place where you are brought under and into the unity of the one God sent. Through that water, you are joined to the water and act of Christ's baptism. You now live in and through this Son with the life God there gives. What does it mean, though, to live in baptism? Each day we make the sign of the cross and say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our baptismal identity is claimed. We are God's forgiven people, and that alone matters. Under those waters we renounce the devil's works and ways. We tell that unclean spirit to get out of here and have no part of us and make room for a different spirit, the Holy Spirit. We claim our identity as those who live under Christ in this world. Our identity is not, that, uh, is not that of sin and the way of death that we have participated in or chosen, but as the people of God who are under the waters of Jesus. With that word and invocation, it is so. And there we are baptized anew as God's in Christ. There we bear the name Jesus and are strengthened by God in the knowledge of his dearly, as his dearly beloved sons. When we give way to doubt and sin, we live apart from this reality. When we live in the way of the world, we live alone. This is the only boat. This is the only ark. This is the only ferry and way through the waters of death that swirl about it. Jesus comes up from the waters on the other side. He makes it through alive, alive to live unto God, a life of sacrifice and death. Do not forget who you are. Never forget who you are. I am baptized. It is that water that ties you to Christ and from Christ to us as one people. As he is crucified, so you are dead to sin. As he dies for sin, so your sins are forgiven. As he is raised, so you are raised. As he is ascended and rules all things, so you stand as Lord, as priests, and as chosen kings. What are you connected to?
from what do you identify and draw your life from? As a branch is to the vine, so find your life in Christ. Turn from all false ways. Life cannot be found in the things that you are seeking, but in the body of Jesus. In water and blood, in spirit and word, you are made his own. Behold, the psalmist said, David said, How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Christ, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Far to near. From away to close, from sinner to saint, in baptism we are drawn into one body in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.